What's up, people? We are here with a free demo of an upcoming visual novel called Sickness. It's coming out on, I believe, January the 20th. And I'm most likely going to play this when it comes out. But I'm trying out the demo first to sort of see if I like it, if, the, uh, if you guys like it as well. And based on that, I will most likely continue it. But when I was looking through like upcoming visual novels, upcoming games through Steam, this one really popped out to me because it, it seems a little different from the usual visual novels that I do as well. And I mean, just look at that freaking picture. It already looks kind of awesome and gruesome in a way as well. Like, I'm really interested in the premise and the story of this game as well. And I don't want to say too much about it because that's actually part of the sort of mystery and fun part of this game. And the main attraction, at least for me. So without further ado, let us start a new game. Murder. One of the most heinous crimes a person can commit. The act of taking another human being's life. The act of robbing a person of their already limited time on this planet. It is a fear-inducing crime which anybody can commit. Every housewife, every student, every police officer is a potential killer. It is a crime that doesn't discriminate by blood or circumstance. It is a crime which can be committed by and make victims of just about anyone. Everybody remains both a potential killer and victim, blissfully ignorant of the fact that they could be next, assuring themselves that it could never happen to them. Oh my god, I will never trust anybody ever again. And so, as a result of that naivete, those very people never see it coming. Though the scene before me may seem horrific, in this case, as with so many others, there was no great story behind it. There was no build-up, no resentment between the victim and myself, no mutual hatred that gave us a reason to fight. We didn't spend years at each other's throats, we never had fought before, and neither one of us saw this coming. In reality, this is the sim uh, result of a simple, common scenario, one we've all heard of before. A penny-pinching employer, a bankrupt employee, and a denied paycheck. Truly, there was nothing special about this encounter. My boss didn't taunt me or attempt me to exacerbate the situation. He didn't fire me, insult me, or do anything to tempt my fate. If anything, I'm the one who made things worse. Rather than try to reason with him, I lashed out, beating the pompous man in front of me to a bloody pulp. I knew it wouldn't accomplish anything. I knew attacking him wouldn't get me the money I needed. And yet, I needed to punish him? That's right. As self-righteous as it sounds, I couldn't let him get away with what he did. The money that greedy bastard owed me, a pittance to him, was everything to me. It would have fed my sister and I, securing our lease for another month, perhaps even granted us a brief respite from the hell we're currently living. It was a shining beacon in our otherwise miserable lives, a way to ensure our survival during such a trying, stressful time. But because of that narcissist's whim, all hope I had of repairing my broken life vanished. He would deny me shelter, food, comfort, and for what? New seats for his car? A fancy watch? A new TV? And so, staring this injustice in the face, hearing firsthand how little my life meant to him, I snapped. Of course, as fitting as it may seem to reciprocate his indifference to my life by taking his, doing so was never my intention. True, I wanted to kill him. I wanted to make him suffer for belittling my life, for denying me even a moment of peace. But I realized then, as I, as I can't clearly see now, that lashing out wouldn't solve anything. So why did I do it? Why would I resort to this? Why would I deliberately choose this no-win situation? If I were to commit a criminal act, 
I resort to violence rather than theft? If this were truly about my wages, why seek revenge rather than an alternative means of compensation? Unfortunately, there's only one answer I can give in which I am confident. You're losing your mind. It isn't the first explanation that came to mind, but it does make sense. A few hours ago, I would have laughed at the cliché of a criminal blaming the voices in their head, even more so at the notion, uh, notion that a person would act on the silent words of an unseen entity. However, as evidenced by the corpse at my feet, those words aren't so easy to ignore. As I attempted to survive in this two-class society, willfully believing that I was somehow immune to the corruption and classism plaguing this town, there was always a voice whispering to me, telling me not to believe the good fortune around me. A voice filled with skepticism and doubt, preempting the inevitable, telling me to take action before it was too late. But you didn't listen. That was my first mistake. I ignored the benevolent advice offered to me, the predictions now shown to be accurate, the good faith I re received from someone asking for nothing in return. When it told me to stay in school and live with the guardian, when it told me to seek work as elsewhere, when it told me to look for a home somewhere safer, I didn't listen. Every step of the way, I fought against the sound, logical advice it offered. If anything, I made a point of doing the opposite of what the voice told me to do. Or at least, until you heard what you wanted to hear. And that was my second mistake. It wasn't that I refused to heed the voice's advice. I simply wasn't interested in taking the safe, responsible route. So by the time that violence had become the advised course of action, my path had already been determined. Sickness, Chapter 1, A New Life Monday evening, September 5th. Less than half an hour ago, in this very room, I committed a serious crime. A very violent crime, the kind of crime for which people go to prison without any hope of ever leaving. I lost control of myself, attacked my boss, and without a doubt ended my short time working in this place. <laughs> yeah, if you don't get fired for killing your boss then I don't know what the hell will. I acted on impulse as I stared in the face an injustice that threatened to take away my home allowing myself to do the only thing I could, uh, I could to avoid feeling powerless. But as the adrenaline wore off and the tension cooled, I soon realized my mistake. I saw clearly the fresh corpse at my feet, the stained carpet beneath it, and the bloody hands responsible for everything before me. And so I stared at my own handiwork, accepted the gravity of the situation before me, and took immediate steps towards regaining control once more. You know, when you called me here, I figured you needed my help with something not strictly legal. But this? Suo, my man, you have outdone yourself. You do, or uh, you really do have a bright future ahead of you. Unfortunately, given my dire situation, my options were quite limited. Staring an imminent prison sentence in the face, I called upon Marcus, a co-worker of mine. Contrary to his crappy dye job and lean figure, Marcus is a man of many trades, several of which aren't entirely legal. Since the moment I began working here, Marcus has been open about his criminal dealings, more than once hinting that he could help me or vice versa. And now that things have come to this, it's time for him to make good on that promise. Oi, oi. Less talking, more lifting. I'm here to help you two, not take care of everything myself. The second Marcus saw our boss in his current state, he understood the situation. Without asking a single question, he promised to help me out of my predicament. Thereafter, 
calling a man who I'd never met before. The scary thing about this is, yeah, is the thing that you owe this person after he sort of helps you out with this, because think of the situation, you just killed someone, right? Obviously, as was described plenty of times before, a really serious and big crime to commit. So he wants to sort of get rid of the evidence for that, and he calls a person. But to owe a, a person that big big amount or that big of a deal, like that person got rid of the corpse for you. What do you actually have to give him in return for that? That's, that's the kind of thing that I'm wondering. Because it's a really big thing that you're asking of a person, right? Uh, well, I've never met before, yeah. And surely enough, upon seeing our boss's corpse, the stranger smiled to himself and grabbed Mr. Mudo's legs, dragging his body into the doorway before requesting assist assistance. Don't be like that. Surely a big, strong man like you can lift that weedy piece of shit by yourself. And get this poor sap's blood all over me in the process? Either give me a hand, or do this yourself. Marcus and his acquaintance carried my boss's corpse into the stranger's van, which was parked just outside of Mudo's office. Thanks to the proximity of my boss's office, nobody heard our scuffle over the machinery used within the warehouse, and Marcus's acquaintance was able to block visibility and access to the office with his vehicle. Even so, despite knowing how fortunate my circumstances were, I couldn't help but feel anxious. Whether these two successfully covered up Mudo's death or not, there was no way this can end well. All it would take is one witness or a slip of the tongue and I could wind up in prison. And even if I do get away with this, what then? Will I be indebted to Marcus forever? Will he ask for something extreme in return for his silence? Exactly. See, that's the important things you gotta think about. No matter what scenario I envision, it doesn't bode well for me. Phew, that bass is heavier than he looks. Tell me about it. I thought my corpse handling days were long over. His corpse handling days? This guy sounds like the right person for the job, but just who is he? Anyway, I'll handle this disposal. You two clean up in here, alright? You're the boss, Andre. Just leave the rest to us. After all, that'll give us time to talk about repayment. Oh no. And there it is. It's not unreasonable for Marcus to expect something in return. I called on him, knowing full well that I'd need to repay the favor. Even so, just thinking about how he'd expect me to repay something like this. What? What do you have in mind exactly? Oh, nothing big. At least, not for someone like you. Oh my god, he's gonna be like, well, seeing as you actually are a killer now already, killing shouldn't be a problem for you, right? So let's just, you know. Uh, a death for a death, a kill for a kill, I don't know how he wants to phrase it, but that's, that's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from that sentence, at least not for someone like you. But really, before we get into that, I gotta tell you, I picked you as a fighter from the moment we met, but to actually kill somebody? I seriously underestimated you. Marcus makes it sound like I planned on killing Mudo from the start, but I'm no killer. Even if I've been in my fair share of fights, I've never tried to kill someone before. With that in mind, I have the perfect job for you. Oh, I'm sure he does. But given the events leading up to this moment, I have to ask, is it a legal job? <laughs> sure, why not? As long as you don't get Caught, of course, yeah, then everything is fucking legal, isn't it? Figures. Oh, cheer up. I'm just messing with you. I've got the perfect job in mind for you. You'll be able to rake in money, feed that aggression of yours, and pay off your debt almost immediately. Interested? Hang on. You're offering to pay me while I repay you? Of course. That means that's obviously gotta mean that it's something really big, right? Considering the reason why we're here, 
I thought it would be better not to get between you and your money. <laughs> Whatever the case, what kind of job are we talking about? I brought you here to get me out of trouble. There wouldn't be any point if you'd just drag me in deeper. Ha, <laughs> you really don't have any faith in me, do you? Well, so be it. Just keep in mind that you're worth more to me alive, and well, than in prison. That is a fair point. Not that you have a choice anyway. If you want all of this kept secret, then you're gonna do exactly as I say. Oh no, this is what I'm afraid of. Richmond, a town riddled with crime and corruption. Richmond is a vast town, a collection of smaller districts, each varying significantly in terms of wealth, ethnicity, and population density. Large enough to entrap millions of citizens every day, or everyday citizens, yet dense enough to suffocate any who dare reside within. It's a complicated town, misunderstood even by those living within its walls. But beyond the size and scope of this town, there is one aspect which stands out above all others, its concentration of wealth. This is a town wherein the wealthy flock together, creating their own small utopia. They build up selective parts of the city, sculpt the law to their liking, and generally get away with their, whatever their bank balance will allow. The end result has been the creation of a state-sized town compromised of countless districts varying from wealthy suburbs filled with hospitals and schools to those lacking even phone lines. Put simply, this is a two-class society, heavily favoring the rich. As someone living in a wealthy suburb while working among the poor, I'm fairly familiar with both sides of the city. Thanks to those who cling to every cent, labor can be commissioned for next to nothing making Richmond a surprisingly cheap place to live. Public transport is constant, resources are plentiful, infrastructure is abundant, and the town keeps growing. For those with the money to support themselves, this isn't a bad place to live. On the other hand, with so much competition for work, most residents have no choice but to accept whatever work they can and to slave away for as little as necessary. Slave wages are standard practice, workplace safety laws don't apply, and it's every man for himself. For anyone without, uh, anyone without a white collar job, this town is hell. And with mere weeks left on our lease, it won't be long before my sister and I experience that, that hell for ourselves. Of course, Looking back over our lives until this point, I can't really complain. Before our parents passed away, Sarah and I lived sheltered, easy lives, never worrying for a second about our housework or finances. We lived good lives in a safe neighborhood. We attended an adequate school, ate healthily, and were never far away from medical help. So now, even with all of that being stripped away, we're still far better off than most others in our situation. Or at least, we would be. If I hadn't just single-handedly destroyed our new lives. No matter what excuse I give, whether I blame my boss's penny-pinching, the foreign anger I felt surging through my body, or merely my desperate need for cash, it doesn't change the fact that I killed a man. Even so, I don't feel guilty. I barely even regret the loss of life. If anything, it was the most fun I've had in months. A single moment of pure bliss, taking me away from the harsh reality of my new life. Rather, what's eating away at me now is the imminent aftermath. Thanks to my selfish act of revenge and self-indulgence, I now have to explain to my only family why, after a mere two weeks in this house, we'll be forced to move again. Without a stable source of income, we won't be able to live here much longer, and 
and I refuse to allow my sister to be subjected to the discrimination and crime that makes this city so unlivable for the poor. But with my only chance of recovery resting in the hands of a friend who essentially blackmailed me into meeting him tonight, I have no illusions over how this will go. So, if my only choices are to give Sarah fair warning before our lease expires, or to place my faith in a criminal who I've known for a mere two weeks, then... Well, can I even call that a choice? As soon as I entered my temporary home, I noticed a pleasant scent coming from the kitchen. Following my nose, I traced the source of the scent back to the chef of the household, who immediately ran over to my side. Ah, welcome back. I thought it was about time for you to get home. I've been waiting all afternoon. The young girl waiting for me was Sarah, my twin sister, the only family I have left. Unlike me, Sarah is still in school, so she's been getting home a few hours earlier than I have lately, giving her ample time to take care of the household chores. Kind, gentle, dependable, smart. Sarah is the image of an ideal little sister, one without whom I'd have never imagined uh, I had never made it this far. I'm not that late, am I? Not at all. In fact, you're just in time. In time? In time for what? Given my first observation upon entering the house, I already had a good idea of what waited, awaited me. However, even with Sarah standing before me while wearing an apron, something didn't seem right. In a house with few appliances and shelves stocked with cheap instant food, my sister, who had never cooked for me before, had somehow whipped up a proper meal in anticipation of my return. I could ignore the fact that this house smells like real food for once, but where on earth did the ingredients and utensils come from? Since Sarah and I began living on our own, we've been eating instant food every day, unable to afford anything better. With the petty cash we had left, there's no way Sarah could have bought any of this. In the saucepan, we have white sauce with chunks of sun-dried tomatoes, and in the pot, we have fettuccine pasta. I hope you're hungry. Oh my god, sun-dried tomato? Fettuccine pasta? Where did she get this from? Hungry is an understatement, but if there's one thing more powerful than my stomach, it's my curiosity. Sarah, where did you get the money for all this? And since when have you known how to cook? I go out of my way to cook you dinner and this is how you react? Fine then, I guess I'll just have to eat it all myself. <sighs> I knew I should have stopped after the first question. Oh well, forget it. Sarah probably just borrowed some things from school or from one of her friends. Anyway, where have you been? Usually you would have been home an hour ago. Shit, that's right. Given the situation, I hadn't even thought about what time it was. Uh, is it worth trying to come up with an excuse now? Um, okay. As usual, I'm gonna overthink the first choice immediately. But the thing is, right, she is our twin sister. So you would sort of think like twins have this sort of unspoken bond most of the time, if not all of the time. So I have a feeling that if we were to make up an excuse or something, she, she would see through it immediately. But then again, I don't know how her reaction is. Like we don't know her, you know, we as the player don't know her well enough to sort of see that if she was a person, because some people are just like, oh, he makes up an excuse, therefore it's better not to pry. But other people on the other hand would be like, he's making an excuse. What the hell is he hiding? And then actually start prying and prodding and poking and trying to find out more. So it also just depends on the kind of person that she is. But this her question entirely. That's also I don't know. I'm just gonna make up an excuse. We're we're I mean we're we're apparently a murderer now. So you know, lying and murdering kind of goes hand in hand. So might as well practice now, right? Even if it isn't rehearsed, it's better than nothing. Uh, sorry about that. 
I got caught up talking to a colleague of mine. Eh? You've been making friends? Friends with that manipulative prick? Not bloody likely. Just a random colleague. We aren't close. Hmm, is that right? They're just a random colleague? Yet you got caught up talking to them? Crap. Well, it was all work-related stuff. Yeah, very serious business. I needed to ask for advice. Hmm. It was a girl, wasn't it? Huh? <laughs> I'm waiting at home patiently, making dinner for you, and you've been flirting with your co-workers? Dang, she almost sounds like a jealous girlfriend. Uh, of course not. You know I wouldn't do something like that. I wonder, oh my god. <laughs> okay, your story checks out. Yeah, I don't smell like perfume or anything. Huh? What is she? Ah, uh, whatever. She smelled us for like a girl scent or something? I'm pretty sure that's what she did. Oh my god. Why do I get the- I thought she was our twin sister, right? This really gives the vibe of like a very sort of kind of jealous girlfriend. Like, why is she not so trusting? Or why why does she even care that? I mean, it kind of depends on how close their relationship is as well as brother and sister. You know, they are twins after all. They tend to have a bit of a sort of a closer relationship than most other siblings would. But still, you wouldn't expect them to be that jealous to this degree of a girlfriend level, you know? Anyway, now that we got that sorted out, I have something for you. Sarah removed her apron simultaneously taking out an envelope from her pocket. Sorry, I know I shouldn't have opened it, you nosy bitch. Oh no, I'm joking. I'm joking, sister. Dear little sweet sister Sarah. Sarah handed me the envelope, which she had attempted to reseal after opening. <laughs> She's like, oh crap, I opened it. Quick, let, let me use my, uh, my spit to try and close the envelope again. Damn it, it doesn't work. I peered inside the envelope, and within it, I found... Money? Wait a minute, there has to be at least $2,000 in here! I spent a little on utensils, and some fresh meat and vegetables. You can't eat instant noodles every day, you know! Sarah explained to me why the envelope was no longer full, but as I vacantly stared at the money in my hands, she needn't have bothered. Even at the pay I was promised, I should have made less than $1,000 in total. For there to be over double that left after Sarah's expenses. This must be Marcus's doing, but how does that make sense? Because didn't we call him after work and we're still working while she comes home from school, right? So, and according to the story, we're only one hour later than usual. So, cleaning up after sort of the... The, the corpse and, and the cleaning the carpet of the blood and everything, that apparently took an hour. Or a bit like an hour after when we would normally be free from work. But how could have Marcus have... Did she make... Did she went shopping and made food within an hour? But as Marcus and I were, were busy with that stuff, that would sort of assume that we're sort of leaving at the same time. How could he have done come to home, somehow drop off the money here, and then she went to buy food and cook food at the same time? This can't be Marcus's doing, right? He knows I need money and that I won't be able to pay him back unless I accept his job offer. Furthermore, Marcus sent the money straight to my sister, eliminating the possibility of me refusing or returning the money. But how did he get the money to my sister so early? Did he know ahead of time? That Mudo would refuse to pay me? Oh, what if, what if, okay, this could make sense. If, it, it, that could sort of make sense if, if he sort of planned out in advance. Or what if he sort of told Mudo, like, yeah, don't, don't pay him the money. And Marcus all planned this because he sort of, sort of expected. He sort of, he said from us, right, that he sort of knew that we were the kind of type of guy that would get into a fight. So maybe he's looking for like a person to do all the dirty work for him. And he thought I was a possible candidate and he set all of this in place to sort of test me for that, I guess. It could be that. This is all just... What are you waiting for? Come on, 
get it while it's hot. Interrupting my agitated, uh, agitated thoughts, Sarah took me by the hand and led me into the living room. Sitting on the table in front of the couch were placemats paired with shiny cl cutlery, more goods we didn't own merely hours ago. Further to that, two steaming plates ent entered my vision moments later as Sarah made another quick stop in the kitchen, bringing with her a heavenly scent. Come on! Put down the money and eat! Doesn't she even question where the money came from? What kind of story did Marcus tell her that makes her so acceptance to 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 the money? Cause or maybe she's just like, ah, I don't care, it's money, give me. It could be that too. But you'd still be a little bit uh, suspicious as like, huh, why did a guy that I don't know suddenly dropped off more than two thousand dollars? As intrigued as I was by the scene before me, the thought of putting down the cash-filled envelope had yet to cross my mind. After all, before I could relax and eat dinner, there was something that I still needed to clear up. I will, but before that, how? And when did you get this envelope? Didn't your boss tell you? The envelope was mailed here some time ago. <laughs> Well, I get that envelopes are made to be mailed, but an envelope with this much money in it? That's just careless and extremely suspicious. Hmm, I hadn't really thought about that. Is our twin sister stupid? No, right? I just found it slipped under the door before I got home. That isn't much to go on, but it does confirm my earlier suspicion. Sarah gets home hours before I do. If this money came from Marcus, he really must have known what would happen ahead of time. Damn it, it feels like I'm being played by that bastard. Enough of that, sit down and eat already. You'd better not be stalling because you're afraid to eat my cooking. What? Uh, of course not. Though it is true that she's never cooked for me before. Oh well, it certainly smells nice enough. Wow, this is actually pretty good. It might be because I've been eating instant food for weeks on end, but this tastes like something I'd actually pay for. And we obviously did as well. <laughs> Stare. Though it might taste better if a certain someone wasn't analyzing every bite I take. Uh, maybe some feedback will get Sarah off my back. Um, it's good, it smells better than it tastes, teaser. Um, I don't know, I think, I, I mean, she went through all this effort, she's obviously very anticipating of our answer, so, you know, I'll just say it's good. Well, it is what she's waiting to hear. This tastes great! You did really well! Of course I did! Just who do you think you're talking to? On the other hand, I should know better than to stroke her ego by now. Whatever the case, it is really nice to be eating real food again. What are you talking about? It's only been a couple of weeks, you know. For you, maybe, but I've gone from a month of hospital food straight to nothing but instant noodles. Oh, right. I guess it has been a while for you. As much as I tried to sympathize with Sarah, my life hasn't been so grand lately either. After suffering a severe head injury and losing months worth of memories as a result, I received my, uh, the grim news that our parents had been killed in a car crash. Worse, since the circumstances surrounding the crash were deemed suspicious, their assets were frozen, leaving Sarah and I without a dime. Finally, without any close relatives who we could rely on, I had little choice but to quit school and find a job, assuming responsibility for Sarah's well-being. So now, after suffering so much hardship in such a short amount of time, being able to indulge in a peaceful home life like this is a dream come true. Either way, you're right, it is nice. It feels like we've finally got him some piece of our old lives back. I couldn't agree with you more. 
And with that in mind, dear sister, what will be the next step of the Tesla family restoration project? The... What? If we're going to restore our lives to what they were before, we need to plan out what we're going to do. What's next? A car? A bigger TV? A living maid? Holy crap. That's a kind of a, a big step. Like I let you get a living maid, you pervert. But you do have a point. We should have some kind of plan to manage from now on. Why is she, was she so quick to call me pervert? Obviously the reason to have a living maid is to have her, you know, be a maid and, and clean stuff, I guess. Not for the pervert kind of reason. Because obviously as a living maid, we would hire an old per- No, of course we wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that. Okay, maybe she's a little right. Okay, she's definitely right about the pervert stuff, but nevertheless, that shouldn't be the first reaction. Obviously she knows us too well. That's good. That must be it. She's our twin sister. She knows us way too well. What do we need next? There are a lot of things still missing from this house. Well, they seem to have a, a flat screen TV. The facilities work. And we have minor luxuries like a television and refrigerator. But it's just, it's still a far way off feeling like home. It's not something we need to figure out right now. Just give it some thought. Right, right. I shouldn't get too excited about spending money we don't have yet. Besides, we should be going to bed soon anyway. So, right. We should get a second bed. Oh my god, we sleep in the same bed? Huh? I mean, even if there's only one bedroom in this house, there's still room for another bed. That way, we wouldn't need to share anymore. I'm sure many people would get the wrong idea if I said that I slept with my sister, but there's really nothing dubious at play here. Maybe you should say I sleep in the same bed with her but nothing else, you know? Cause obviously you gotta add more to that sentence. Cause you know, when you say that I sleep with my sister, yeah people are gonna think they get the wrong idea for sure. So you gotta add more contact like sleep in the same bed but there's like a, a wall of pillows in between. This house only has a single bedroom, and until now, we couldn't afford a second bed. Furthermore, when I suggested that I take the couch, Sarah insisted that I needed to sleep properly for work, and I could tell that she didn't want to be left alone in an unfamiliar house. Given the situation, I'd say our decision was correct. That's a waste of money! It is? But... Don't you want a bed of your own again? I mean, surely you're sick of... Focus on things we need, not things we want. Besides, it's getting late. We should think about it tomorrow. Huh? I guess my idea wasn't as bright as I thought. Maybe Sarah isn't ready to sleep alone yet after all. Regardless, Sarah was right about one thing. We shouldn't get too excited about spending money we don't even have yet. I should have told Sarah where that money came from and that there might not be any future payments like this. But I let the atmosphere go to my head, afraid to break the mood. For the first time since her parents died, Sarah was happy. And if tonight pans out, I'd be satisfied with merely prolonging her happiness, even just temporarily. <laughs>